Hey guys and welcome to the channel. My name is Nick O'Leary. Now today we're having a look at tips and tricks on Apple CarPlay specifically. Now part one was connecting Apple CarPlay for the very first time if you're new to it. Part two was troubleshooting just in case you ran into a few problems with actually getting it going in the first place. But in this episode today, it's everyone's favorite tips and tricks on Apple CarPlay. So maybe you've been using Apple CarPlay for a while now and as I mentioned in my first video, I want to become that power user and know all these little tips and tricks that you can do on Apple CarPlay. So today is my top 10 personal tips and tricks I use every day. And let's start at number one. So on Apple CarPlay, did you know that you can customize your wallpaper? So the wallpaper being the colors you see on the home screen. So it used to be, if I remember, it used to be gray but uh, of course now with the latest updates, I think it was iOS 13 or 14 and above, you can now customize your wallpaper. So let's go down to settings, go in here and then there's an option for wallpaper. Then you can cycle through and choose these different ones which will then update and reflect the home screen. But for even more choice, iOS is the name of the software used by Apple on iPhones. And there's a new one out called iOS 15 that's just been released. So stick around till the end to see what's been added and what I personally love the most. Now on top of this as well, you can also customize the icons on your home screen. So to do this, unlock your phone, go to settings, then scroll down to general, go to CarPlay, and then find your car in this list. So in this one, it's the MBUX 35268. Those numbers will be fairly unique to your car. So tap on that one and then go to customize. Now in this list here is basically all of the apps that you've got installed on your phone which are compatible with Apple CarPlay. And quite simply, the lines you see on the right hand side, just drag and move these round and you'll then see it will change on the screen. So pro tip here, if you do this while it's plugged in, then of course you can see where the icons appear on the screen. So maybe, I don't know if you want maps first, for example, just tap that and drag it up. You can move the music round and uh, you can even remove apps as well. So say for example, on my next page here, I don't really use that map, so you could delete that off of here. Um, that's not actually deleting it off of your phone, it's just purely off the Apple CarPlay uh, on the screen. So a very unique way of customizing your kind of Apple CarPlay experience in the car. Now, of course, if you did make a mistake, there is a reset button on your phone, which will reset the home screen layout back to factory settings. Now, while we're on the topic of customization, you can also change the light mode and dark mode appearance as well of the whole interface. So to do that, just swipe across and find your settings icon again, then go into a thing called appearance. And then when you go in here, you'll see there's an automatic mode and an always dark mode. Now, this is a bit like most websites and most phones these days, you can choose between a light mode and dark mode. If I do automatic, basically you'll see now the interface is kind of lighter and will actually go darker automatically when the sun sets and it's kind of dark outside and the lights come on automatically. But, um, you know, just in case the sun shines through or the glass in here, you know, this one's got a sunroof, in case it gets a little bit bright and you can't really see it, you can always make it a little bit brighter just to see. Now, personally, I'd prefer the dark mode, but um, use a preference after all. Now for tip and trick number three, if you're like me, I do use my calendar in my phone quite a lot. And of course, when you create new events or appointments in there, underneath you can actually pop in the location uh, of that event. And if you do that, Apple CarPlay will actually suggest it to you when you pop in. So you can see here on the bottom left, I've got a calendar entry. And if I click on that, filming Apple CarPlay part three, this video at Mercedes-Benz Pool. And of course, when I hop in, I don't need to type in any postcodes or anything like that. I can just click on that one and away you go. Now, just in case it hasn't suggested for any reason, there is an actual dedicated calendar app on the Apple CarPlay screen. Uh, most commonly, it's on the second uh, page across. So if you swipe across, click on the calendar, and then you can access it this way. Up next is Siri. Now Siri is a main integral part of Apple CarPlay because at the end of the day, we of course are driving and we're not allowed to use our phones behind the wheel in most countries uh, for safety. So Apple CarPlay helps this by offering all these car friendly apps, but also the voice assistant Siri. 
Now, of course, if you have a car with MBUX like this one, you do have the Hey Mercedes How can I help? voice assistant as well. Um, now, that will actually activate while Apple CarPlay is active. But of course, on your steering wheel as well, there is the voice button. Now, if you just flick that once, it brings up the Hey Mercedes voice assistant. But of course, you might not want to use that. You might want to use Siri. So to activate Siri, hold that button up. Hey Siri, how are you doing today? I'm fine. Thanks. And you can have Siri behind the wheel as well. Now this basically means you've got two voice assistants. Now I have covered the Mercedes voice assistant in another video, so I'll link that up above if you want to see the top 10 commands that I've done for that one. But of course with Siri, the list is endless on that one because it runs off of your phone. You can ask it to set a reminder for when you get home to remind you about something. You could create events. You could phone people in your phone book. You can play music off your phone, for example, or even navigate on the sat nav dictate and read out messages the list is endless so having siri in the car as well is great but just remember one press for the car's voice assistant but hold it for siri and hey while we're on the topic of siri as well did you know you can actually change the accent or the voice of siri as well now you will need your phone for this so if i unlock my phone and go to settings and then go to siri and search and then in here, there's a thing called Siri Voice. Then you can choose between American, Australian, British, Indian, Irish, and even South African as well. So um, let's have a quick run through those. Hi, I'm Siri. 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 Now that's definitely been updated because uh, there weren't that many voices a long time ago but yeah there's uh, quite a few to choose from from there so up next guys are the speed cameras but just before we jump into that if you're loving today's video don't forget that like button down below and a sub to the channel would be amazing as it really does help the channel out but without any further interruption let's get back to those tips and tricks Ah yes, now speed cameras. This is definitely a popular request by Mercedes-Benz owners. However, sadly, on the inbuilt navigation system in Mercedes-Benz, it just doesn't exist. And the reason for this is because in Germany, it's actually illegal to have any speed camera detection equipment, whether it be like a kind of radar thing or on the sat-nav system. So naturally, Mercedes-Benz being in Germany, they just don't implement any of that technology because it's illegal. However, there is a workaround. Because we're using Apple CarPlay and uh, we're not using the inbuilt multimedia system, you can make use of Google Maps or even Waze as well. So these are two separate apps. Uh, of course, with Apple CarPlay, you'll have Apple Maps as standard. I've noticed Apple Maps has started to actually show speed cameras, um, but Google Maps and Waze do offer uh, these features as well. So you can quite simply load up these relevant apps and then you have speed camera detection, of course, in your car. However, of course, it won't show you uh, where like a mobile van pops up or something. And then they're obviously checking people's speed in different locations. So obviously be aware of that. It will just show you the fixed locations like on uh, motorways and that sort of thing. But also one extra thing as well with Waze. Waze kind of offers community based reporting. So as opposed to just relying on uh, official live traffic sources and kind of official locations, Waze actually offers a report button just on the bottom left which actually allows you to report either police, an accident, traffic, a hazard or even a map issue as well. So it's kind of more community based reporting, a bit more than what Apple Maps and Google Maps offer. Now next up are news reports. Now again if you're like me I don't actually listen to the radio that much. I mainly use Apple CarPlay every day, listen to music and of course use podcasts as well. Now. When it comes to news reports, because I don't listen to the radio, I might not know what's going on. So I can ask Siri to read me the latest news. Can you read me the latest news, please? Here's the latest news from the BBC. And then I'll get the latest news report. Now, next up on the list is sharing your ETA or estimated time of arrival with friends or family. Now, this is a very specific Apple Maps feature, so just be aware it won't be on Google Maps or Waze or any other mapping provider you might use. So, it's specifically Apple Maps, but it is quite good because 
Um, quite commonly if you do like a long journey or something, say if I was going from here in the south of the UK to London for example, there are a few motorways and you know sometimes there can be traffic and delays. You can send your estimated time of arrival to your friend or family from the car and it will actually update them in case you get stuck in uh, any traffic or anything. So quite simply if you load up Apple Maps, uh, pop in a destination of your choice and when the sat nav is going all you do is then tap on the little arrow on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And when you click on here you can of course mute and unmute like normal but underneath there's a share ETA button and when you go in here you can then share your ETA with any friends or family and one click of that will send them a message and actually update them if your ETA changes quite significantly. Now modern multimedia systems in virtually all manufacturers are stunning they're very very graphical and certainly in Mercedes you've got these two widescreen displays just look stunning. Now some people ask, what about changing the maps for a satellite view? Now sadly you can't do this on the inbuilt systems on Mercedes-Benz, but you can do this on Apple CarPlay. Now this isn't an Apple Maps feature, this is a Google Maps feature, so you need to download the Google Maps app to do this. And quite simply just head over to that app once it's installed and it'll look a bit like that. Now that's the default view, but if you go to settings and go to satellite map, that'll look a bit like this. So I know some people, maybe from other manufacturers, are used to a satellite map. But there's one workaround if you do fancy Google Maps kind of satellite mapping in your car when you're navigating. So while I was in the process of making this video, Apple actually launched iOS 15. Now I've got this installed on this one and rightly so, as I mentioned in tip and trick number one, uh, there were going to be new wallpapers. So I can confirm there are a few new ones here and you can see I've taken advantage of one of them already. Now, apart from the home screen and the dashboard looking almost identical, those with a keen eye will notice that the Apple Maps icon has been slightly changed. And going into Apple Maps, the whole thing's had an upgrade. So the graphics you see on the screen have been upgraded. I think the font has changed as well, so I don't remember it looking quite like that. But um, there's loads of features been added to Apple Maps. So for example, a bit like how I mentioned earlier with Waze, there's now a dedicated report button in Apple Maps. So um, not something we've ever seen before, because normally that's been reserved for the third party apps like Waze. But yes, you can now report uh, traffic and speed cameras and that sort of thing in Apple Maps natively. Of course, we've got the graphical upgrade as well, but there's also uh, an upgrade on the voice. So normally with most sat navs, you will have uh, the voice on or off, which is fine. But in Apple Maps, now you can choose to have it on, off, or just have your alerts. And those alerts can be things, I'd imagine probably traffic, but I have had the alert come up with the speed camera as well. So quite handy if you want the sat nav off because you know where you're going, but it can notify you of any speed cameras coming up in advance. So pretty good. That's not all about Apple Maps. Uh, there have been a few upgrades in settings as well. So for starts, on here on the top right, there's a little bell with what looks like a, uh, a kind of sound wave. If I go into settings, this is a new thing called announce messages. Now I believe this was only on, I think it was AirPods Pro uh, beforehand, but now that's been upgraded to Apple CarPlay. And what that means is if anyone texts you, it can automatically read it out to you. Now this will be off by default, uh, but you can toggle this on. But of course do just bear in mind if anyone else is in the car, then it will just read a text message out uh, regardless. So go in here and then you can adjust these settings and toggle that uh, on and off in here. Now, you may have noticed at the top as well, there's a new thing called driving focus. This is a new thing that's replaced do not disturb while driving. Do not disturb while driving was uh, basically just do not disturb and it just turned off all notifications. Whereas driving focus forms part of the focus modes found on iOS 15. In a nutshell, you can basically customize who contacts you. So. As an example, you could probably have just your family members or important people close to you ring you only while driving and then send everyone else to voicemail. So lots of customization on that front. But yes, those are just a few upgrades found on iOS 15. So I think it deserves obviously that tip and trick on its own because there's a few things there that can enhance your experience even further. 
And there we go, guys. That concludes this week's video on Apple CarPlay tips and tricks. Let me know what you guys think. Do you have your own tips and tricks that you use each day on Apple CarPlay? Pop them down below in the comment section and share with everyone what you use. Now, as always, huge shout out to Sandam Mercedes-Benz as they help provide all the cars you see in the videos. And as always, if you liked what you saw, don't forget that subscribe button and the like button as it really does help the video out. As always, see you next week.